The world's greatest secret agent has left a mark across dozens of popular novels and dozens of even more popular films. Yet 007's most influential legacy may just be in video games. Since James Bond's first appearance in video games in 1982, Her Majesty's Secret Agent has left an undeniable mark on the industry at large, mostly thanks to one legendary game. But with over two dozen games released across seven console generations, Bond is arguably one of the most successful licensed series in all of video game history. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at the history of James Bond to answer one question. What happened to the franchise? The suave British spy got his first video game in 1982, right in the middle of Roger Moore's run as Bond. Even with the simplistic graphics of the time, you'd expect the first Bond game to be an action-packed platformer or maybe an early shooter. You'd be wrong, because the first game was shaken but not stirred, a text adventure. It was described by one magazine as having the authentic feel of a James Bond novel. This is true in the sense that it had no pictures and was filled with words. The next decade of Bond games were based off of both the films and Ian Fleming's novels and covered a wide variety of genres. Alongside text adventures and shooters, there were platformers, a racing game, and even an adaptation of the James Bond Jr. cartoon. These games were somewhat popular, but Bond didn't stand out from other licensed games. It wasn't until Nintendo got its hands on the license in the mid-90s that 007's popularity would skyrocket. And you know what game I'm talking about. Shot by shot by shot. Load a rumble pack and see how it feels when 007 meets Nintendo 64. Rare's GoldenEye 007 was released a year and a half after its namesake in 1997 and would go on to sell over 8 million copies, making it the third most popular Nintendo 64 game. It was the first great console first-person shooter and established many of the conventions in the genre that other games still use to this day. Its amazing single-player campaign, coupled with the great multiplayer mode, makes GoldenEye one of the greatest games of its era. Sadly, the Nintendo era of James Bond games would last for only one more game. James Bond 007 for the Game Boy was the final game Nintendo would publish in the franchise, as the license was scooped up by Electronic Arts. Its first game would be The World Is Not Enough for the N64 and PlayStation. Weirdly, each version was developed by a different studio, which resulted in a great N64 game and a very mediocre PlayStation game. Outside of 007 Racing and two handheld games, EA's run on Bond was straightforward. From 2000 to 2005, EA would release one major game in the franchise each year. Agent Under Fire was the second most successful game in the franchise, selling 5 million copies. 2003's Nightfire had a well-received multiplayer mode that let players play as famous film characters. Everything or Nothing featured the voices and likenesses of Pierce Brosnan, Willem Dafoe, Judi Dench, and John Cleese. And From Russia With Love was an adaptation of the classic Sean Connery film. Everything seemed to be going well, until EA cancelled a game based on the then-upcoming Casino Royale. The move cost Bond rights holders, MGM, to lose millions, and along with EA's move away from licensed games, caused the publisher to drop the license in 2006. Who swooped in to save Bond? None other than Activision. But instead of saving it, it'd be more accurate to say Activision slowly destroyed it. During its tenure, Activision released one Bond game that was well-received, a remake of GoldenEye 007. Its other three games, Quantum of Solace, Bloodstone, and 007 Legends sold poorly and received mixed to bad reviews. 2012 007 Legends was mocked in particular because it turned James Bond into a Call of Duty clone. And in a cruel turn of fate, it would be the last Bond game released. In 2013, Activision abruptly pulled Legends and other Bond games from online storefronts, releasing a statement that it was backing away from licensed games entirely. So why hasn't there been a James Bond game in the years since? While no one has outright said anything, there are a number of possible reasons why. And they all boil down to money. Here's the simplest explanation. James Bond is a very profitable franchise. Skyfall alone made over 1 billion US dollars worldwide. 
And the more profitable a license is, the more expensive it is to purchase the rights for it in other media. Anyone wanting to make a James Bond game had better be prepared to pay a hefty price for it. Furthermore, the franchise's heyday in video games was arguably the Nintendo and EA eras. Activision's Bond games got a much more tepid response, both critically and commercially, by comparison. Studios looking at its most recent sales are likely turned off by that alone. Outside of Bond, the video game industry itself has dramatically changed in the years since Bond's height in popularity. Big budget licensed games are few and far between outside of Star Wars and the LEGO games, as most publishers have switched to original IP. And while there is a big market for single player games out there, the linear style of Bond games has fallen out of fashion. And unless you can turn Bond into a battle royale, its multiplayer will be a harder sell. For those looking to see 007 back in action in video games soon, the future is bleak. The best chance for the spy to make a grand comeback is after Daniel Craig leaves the character behind, as his absence will mark a fresh start for the franchise as a whole. And when the franchise does come back, and it will, Bond's legacy ensures that there will be plenty of people looking forward to seeing what 007 can do.